Um, we have tried very, very hard to implement a wireless system of our own, but we've had no public support, no money. Um, even today, though, we are still working on a system. Uh, Jonathan, where'd you go? To the hall. Uh, typical. Very many. <laughs> um, just today, we had some new equipment show up in, a, in the office and uh, for the wireless service. We can only buy this stuff in little dribs and drabs. We just do not have money, and we're not getting support from anybody. Yeah, Jonathan back there is holding uh, the wireless transfer. That would be outside, that would live on the side of a building and provide a neighborhood with wireless access. So, wireless access is at best a stopgap. It doesn't have particularly high speeds, but it can be laid out economically which is our main reason for doing that rather than anything else at the moment. With no resources, it's all we can do. We'd like to get public support. We'd like to get publicity. Um, Halifax, I've got to say it, is uh, abominable for its media coverage of technical issues. It couldn't be worse if they were drunken monkeys. Um, I'm actually disgusted by how, much, how bad our media serve us on this issue. Um, so the real answer is this, fiber optic, cable running to the home. This is a picture of the future, however it's not here. This is a residential neighborhood in Malaysia. That's a fiber optic cable box living on a telephone pole, providing the access to the neighborhood. Now the way we'd like to see this laid out is all providers having equal access to neighborhood pods, and then they would be responsible for delivering it from the neighborhood pod to the residents. We would like to see local networks peer together to reduce bandwidth costs. Um, the thing is, with fiber optic, it's all front-end loaded, the costs. Once you put the fiber optic cable in place, it's pretty much low cost to run it from that point. The, all the major costs of getting it there in the first place. Um, our next presentations will expand on this. So, what can you do about this? I don't think there's a wide general awareness of just how bad the situation is around Metro and how little is being done for it. Uh, we've been content the last decade for letting market forces take care of the problem. And, well, frankly, they're not serving us. Um, the market forces are keeping internet speeds low, are rationing access, and are keeping costs high. This is not serving the public interest. Um, so what, we, what you can do is let your representatives know. Here in Spryfield, your provincial representative is Michelle Raymond. Your federal representative is Megan Leslie. Um, the contact information we got from the Nova Scotia website and the Government of Canada website. Or take a little write off of what's there now. Thank you very much.